the, the, the Gong biography written by Elagu, I, I read it, I quoted it in this book. He talked about, Gong biography is his whole life, his nine years in power and everything. But the ones that are pertinent to Ironsi, where he said that Gong was the person who crushed the coup. That's a lie. It's not true. And I had to counter him there. Did Debo have to go to war? Well, I think I said it from the outset that uh, I'm not a man of violence. And uh, where peace will do, there's no need to go to war. And if you go through history, most wars end up on the negotiation table at the end of the day, at the end of the fighting. That's one question of, one aspect of my answer to you, but I will give you another aspect of it. You sitting here now, and somebody comes in, punching you, kicking you, biting you, spitting upon you, he even has a dagger, which means that once it goes into your heart, your end has come. I will ask you to defend yourself. No people have been killed like Ndibo in Africa. Not even the, the, this thing that happened in Rwanda. This thing went on for many months. It went into the war. They kept bombing churches. They kept bombing markets. They kept, they kept bombing uh, public squares. They said that uh, salvation was a legitimate instru instrument of warfare. And Who said? I always said it. I now said all of them said it. They blockaded Biafra. Even if I didn't say it verbally, that's that's the meaning. And kids were dying from lack of uh, nutrition. It was with, war. It was war. And then all those were people who got killed for things they knew nothing about. Ibo wanted war, right? And they got war. Who said Ibo wanted war? Did that say anything of the sort? Mm -hmm. I'm saying that if you are attacked, you should defend yourself. And you're telling me that uh, Ibo wanted war. Was it, was it Biafra that attacked uh, Nigeria? Nigeria attacked Biafra? Yes, right? Nigeria attacked Biafra. And Biafra defended itself? Yes. Yes. Was Biafra prepared for that war? Biafra was, given the benefit of hindsight, that Biafra was unprepared. Should Biafra have waited for the right time to go to war? Yes, people suggested that, that that would have been the best thing to do. You didn't go to war if the certainty of your defeat is there. Mm. You made peace. You see what I mean? Would the Igbo nation go to war again? I told you here that I'm not a prophet. But I can tell you, I can tell you that if you attacked any ethnic group in this society, even if made up of 20 people, by the time you finish killing 19 of them, the 20th person may at least try to defend themselves. Are Igbo people under attack in the present Nigeria? Yes. Who is attacking them? The federal government is attacking them. Tell me more. Okay. The Southeast geopolitical zone was destabilized by Abuja. How? This, well, it started with police stations being attacked. You go to some place like... Uh, Imo State, they attack the police station. The military thing is that of Obinze, they are just minutes away. Other military formations are there. They sack the prison. Nobody will do anything. All over the east. Who was sacking the prisons, attacking the police stations? Those people who were organized to attack those police stations and prisons were doing, releasing prisons. That I, was where it started. IPOB? No, I'm not saying IPOB. I said those thugs who were attacking. We are doing those, but the central point I'm making is that you can't have a government in place and they sack a police station today, no defense. They sack a second one tomorrow, no defense. They sack 10 police stations in the state, no defense. Chief Iluai Gunam, this thing who was before. attacking the police stations? Is it IPOB? You asked me that question. I oh, said, yes, no, I don't, I don't attribute those attacks to them. The people who should have answered their question are the government functionaries who had the means and the wherewithal to counter those attacks. 
But that was leading to answering your question, mm. the destabilization of uh, the South East Job political zone. Okay. Now, when, when Buhari was uh, head of, military head of state, he organized with some ex-Israeli secret agents to go and kidnap Umar Adiko in London and bring him back to this country. They kidnapped Umar Adiko, they took him to Stansted Airport, they created him, drugged him, but the Scotland Yard Police uh, Department, they found out and released the man. The Ibo man wants to have the same basic rights that every other Nigerian enjoys. The Ibo man wants to be in freedom. The Ibo man doesn't want to hear that he cannot vote in Lagos. There are Yoruba and Igbo people in London winning electoral offices, even in the U.S. But Yoruba, Igbo people are voting everywhere in Nigeria. Didn't you see what happened during the last uh, ele general elections? Did you, well, you, didn't you hear about You live in the body, but didn't you know what was happening in Lagos? Didn't you see officials of this current government saying that they should go back to the East? How can you say people should work? There are millions of Yoruba people in Cote d'Ivoire, at least five million. They've been living there since the 30s. Nobody's chasing them away. They participate in every aspect of life. Nobody's why, should you, why, should you, why should you tell me that I can't live in Lagos? I can't use my money to buy a house in Lagos. But Igbo people are living in Lagos. Didn't you hear the clamor for them to leave? Igbo people are buying houses in Lagos. Didn't you hear the, that they bought up the whole of uh, Lagos Island? Igbo as if they first people are striving in Lagos till now. I don't think you are following me. I'm following you. You are saying that Igbo people are thriving. Yes. It didn't occur to you that they are tri thriving because of their resilience, in spite of all the adversities on the, uh, put in their way, mm. in, in spite of all the opposition? Is it not because they know their history, they have their resilience, they know what's in their DNA, DNA that they are surviving and thriving? Do you want an Igbo president? I want a competent president. That is one question. I do not want a norms call to become president of Nigeria simply because he's Igbo. Do norms storms govern a country? I don't, yes. Have they governed Nigeria before? If Nigeria were otherwise governed, we wouldn't be in this mess that we are today. Look at, look at, we're in a mess now. Who is a norms call? A norms call is person who don't get anything inside in gray, in brain power. You don't get brain power, that's a norms call. And they've been president of Nigeria? Through time. Is Peter Abi one of them? He's never been president of this country. Is he a norm score? No, how could he be? I was his chief of staff when he was governor of Anambra State. The man has grey matter in his head. Tell me more. Oh, uh, I saw this man for the first time when Ojuku came to Delta State to campaign for Abga. And I talked to him there, asked him a few questions, and I said, well, let's see how it goes. And I went to him. When the governorship election took place in Anambra State, Ngige was declared winner and sworn in as governor. I got convinced that Tito B won the election and I, I started to campaign for him. By then I held a, a weekly column in the Vanguard every Tuesday. Samamuka, the owner of the publisher of Vanguard, allowed me, gave me the leeway, you know, the license. Every week I was writing. The right thing should be done. Peter B went to court. After three years, he won. And he went into power. And he achieved a lot there. We have seen never call him or say, come give account of how you spend the money. Up to next tomorrow. How many governors have got that kind of uh, flag of support to wave?